Welcome back to Our Own Devices with Nandagopal Rajan. And this time we have a really special guest, one of the actual giants of the internet, uh, the person who was one of the co-founders of Opera and now runs a very successful uh, browser called Vivaldi, which is actually celebrating five years. Welcome to the show, John Von Techner. Thank you, Nanda. So, John, there's a lot we can chat with you, but let's start by Vivaldi. It's 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 a it's a very unique browser, but it's also a browser that wants to make a difference. So, for the audience who might not know about Vivaldi, can you just explain what you guys are doing? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we have a very different approach to a lot of uh, the other browsers out there. I think you'll find most of the browser companies are kind of larger companies with uh, business models, which include things like collecting data on users and and the like. Now, we are a small company, which is owned by the employees. Uh, we don't have investors. And we are basically just focusing on building a, a great piece of software. And we have a, a vision and, and an idea that we adapt to the needs of every individual user. So instead of using kind of collecting information about what people are doing with their browsers and utilizing that to, to build a browser that's somewhat optimized for kind of the biggest group, we understand that we are all different. We are all we all have different needs and, and, and wants and, and we adapt to the needs of every user on every device um, and we make something unique. That That's kind of where we are coming from. And it's a different philosophy from, I think, a lot of the software development that is happening at this time, where it's basically, okay, you try to optimize for the kind of average user, whatever that is. Well, in, in our world, there is no average user. There's just a lot of different people with different needs. And so um, we end up adding a lot of functionality. We add a, uh, we end up focusing quite a lot on privacy uh, for real. Um, I mean, things like putting uh, one, one, not collecting information on users ourselves, uh, not even for the sake of trying to build kind of a, a better software. Uh, so we are not collecting kind of what people are doing with their browsers. Uh, and, and, and similarly, also putting in tracker blocker and ad blockers and the like for those that want to do, use those kind of services as well. So uh, in other words, you're not a browser that a lot of uh, services out there would love, right? <laughs> you know, because you know, well, they don't work on your browser the way they should. But But we are also in a world where a lot of companies are now talking about um, you know cookieless world and and giving users more control of their data so do you think that's actually going to happen actually i mean i'm going in a different way i'm i'm not against cookies cookies are actually necessary for normal operations and i think in some ways they've gotten some slack because they've been misused like uh, mm -hmm. because i think the problem is where you take information and you collect information from a lot of different services and that creates a problem i also think it's not a question of giving the user control of the data it's a question of basically saying you can't do that you can't collect data on users. That's called spyware. Uh, and, and, and basically, uh, any real software shouldn't be doing that. I, I think we are all kind of gotten used to this idea that the software that we use is spying on us. But it isn't normal. It isn't acceptable. Uh, so I think, I mean, and, and by the way, we, that's something that we are trying to have an influence on, that you actually do regulate those things, that you can't just collect information about what people are doing and utilize that in any way that you like. Now, you need a lot of data uh, potentially for running certain services, and that's one thing. I mean, you may have access to a lot of data on your customers because of a service that you provide, but then your goal as a technology provider should be to keep that data safe, not try to build profiles on your users that you can sell to third parties to kind of uh, influence them. So. Uh, and, and by the way, I mean, your, your comment on, I mean, our browser not working uh, with sites and the like, that, that, that's actually not true because, I mean, we're using the Chromium engine. So the browser will work on just about any site that you use it with. Now, you may, if you, uh, ha, I mean, if you block ads and the like, if you do that, you may run into problems on certain sites that don't work as well without uh, without that. Well, I and mean also, uh, you know, I meant that a certain service might not like being used on your service because they don't get the kind of data they're used to. Yeah, I mean, 
obviously, if, if, if and I think in a way, what we are mainly concerned about is the large companies, because I think in a way, it's the large companies that are collecting the vast amount of data. I think in a way, uh, there's a difference between what is being uh, kind of th- that you visit a site and they have some information on what you're doing on that site. If it's not shared with anyone else and it's not shared with the big guys, I think that's a difference. And I think in a way, there's been a focus on the details here. But I really think, I mean, the big issue is the collection of data, which is put into big data pools, which is then used to create profiles on people. And, and that's where it goes wrong, really. For a lot of the big tech companies, that is the business model. So, so how do you think uh, you know these companies um, you know will survive in a world where people become more and more aware, are more protective about their data, and, and we're already seeing some of that happening across the world. Well, I think, I mean, I have the benefit of having been on the internet from the very, very, very beginning, from the time that you had a hundred web servers. Uh, and I mean, the reality, the internet is in very, uh, I mean, to a very big extent built on advertisement. Now, the big lie in this case is, is that, okay, um, we need to collect data because otherwise we can't provide free services and the like. And that's not true because otherwise the internet wouldn't have been existing at all. You could build things based on traditional ads without actually collecting ads on the individuals. Uh, So it's more of a question, I mean, what is acceptable ads? And I think what we all agree is acceptable. If you're on a tech side, you see tech ads and the like. I think that's acceptable to most users. What you don't want is the tracking where you're being, where what you're doing on one side is then used on another one, et cetera. And that's basically a few big companies that are doing for the most part. And the, the reality is, I mean, actually, if you took this away from these companies, they would be doing fine. <laughs> I mean, Google as a company, for example, they could they could go back to uh, kind of contextual ads and they would still be making uh, plenty of money. Uh, Microsoft as well. I mean, they're selling your soft. I mean, you're buying software from Microsoft and then they're actually spying on you as well. That doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, the fact that you ask questions about allowing data about how you're using your computer to be collected, I, I think that's out, out, outrageous. Um, and and when it comes to things like Facebook, there's, I mean, they may struggle a little bit more because I think so much of their business model is based on collecting data, uh, but I'm sure they can find a business model where they'll do okay. Um, so, I mean, the goal isn't to, to, in any shape or form, kill those companies. Uh, I think they can survive uh, and do quite well, some of them or most of them. But the reality is their business model has actually hurt a lot of companies. I think if you look at, for example, for uh, journalism and and the like, I think you'll find that uh, revenues from journalism, from news sites and the like has lowered in the last few years compared to where it was before you had these, these ads that followed the individual. When you had ads where you could get a premium on a premium site, uh, that was working better than now where it's following you wherever you go. Uh, and I think that has been a benefit for maybe lower ranking content and and, and actually in, in particular uh, false content. So um, a lot of the users, um, you know, time spent on a computing device or even a smartphone is on the browser. Um, and is that also why you know, um, you know the browser needs to be a little bit more uh, you know secure when it comes to your data privacy uh, standpoint? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, I mean, you want your browser to not be in particularly engaging and collecting information on you. I mean, that's a, that's one a given. And then I think, I mean, having those options built in to be able to kind of stop tracking and the like is is is, is beneficial. Uh, and, and I think, I mean, people will have to decide how they utilize that functionality. But I think in a way there is too much tracking. It is a significant problem for society that so much information is collected on us, which never should be collected at all. It shouldn't be allowed. And I mean, the positive thing is that I think more and more people and even governments are starting to understand that this is a problem. Then the question is, do they dare to do what's necessary uh, to actually solve it, because it isn't a question of yet another dialogue asking, can we? 
because we all know that when you get that dialogue, you don't really have a choice. There's only one button, really, and it says yes. And if there is a no button, basically, you can't use the service or you can't kind of use the device even. And, and that's not an acceptable solution. So I really think what we need is basically to say what's acceptable for companies to collect of information, what is it acceptable for them to use with any information that they happen to have, and put rules and regulations on that. So is there something ethically wrong then in a company that is looking at this data or needs this data also running something like a browser, like, you know, to have, you know, the big tech in its traditional sense where it's literally running all parts of the business that a consumer uh, is sort of trapped in? Yes, I mean, obviously, uh, there's always the question of monopolies and the like. I mean, when you're mixing up kind of having an operating system and a browser and you give priority to your browser and stuff like that, that, that's one thing. But I I really think it's mostly a question of, okay, uh, what kind of information are you collecting? Are you collecting information that it's uh, acceptable for you to be collecting? I mean, we are going minimalistic on this. But I mean, I think there's, it's, it's acceptable for certain services to have uh, access to certain information. It's more than a question of how you utilize that information, right? So you may have, for example, a driving, uh, I mean, a map uh, information service, right? Uh, it's useful to know how traffic is flowing, right? So there is a need for all the data with regards to location information and the like. But that doesn't mean it's natural to actually then build profiles on every individual and how they drive. And, and utilize that for the sake of advertisement. So it, it's a question of what's acceptable and not acceptable with 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 data. And, and I think it's it's fairly uh, it should be possible to 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 make something that works uh, where you can use the data for what you need to use the data for, but are not misusing the data. And I think the misuse that, that we are seeing is, is is very significant and unfortunate and, 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 and far too much focused by certain companies on collecting as much information about their users as possible and then making it available to advertisers. Are you seeing the awareness among the regular users growing on using browsers like Vivaldi so that you know, they stay at this minimalist level where they know that they're not giving unnecessary data to all sorts of companies and maybe a lot of companies they don't even know from uh, about? I think there is uh, clearly a, an, an interest from the users that they would like to to move in this direction. So there's, there's an awareness, there's an increased awareness. I mean, a lot of people are spending so much time online today. Uh, and, and, and when you have, I mean, the, the reality, there's e- even collection of data uh, outside of the internet, util- utilizing Bluetooth beacons and Wi-Fi information and GPS information and, and potentially other, o- other methods of collecting data. So I, I think people are starting to be aware of this. Uh, I think people are starting to be aware of the consequences. And I think... If you ask people, and there's been done fairly uh, significant surveys about this, that people don't want their data to be collected. They actually don't like this. And they don't like uh, ads that follow them. They, They don't mind ads, but they don't like ads that follow them. And, and I, I'm not even sure they work particularly better or kind of in, in, in general. I think we could well go back to, to it kind of contextual ads and that would be a, a much better situation for everyone. In case of this awareness, are you seeing this is a, a sort of, um, uh, you know, better, bigger in certain parts of the world and maybe some, um, and maybe other parts of the world are a little bit lagging behind because traditionally we would think Scandinavia is a place where a lot of awareness is there and Europe in general is where People um, or the governments, at, uh, at least, are, take, uh, are doing a pushback towards big tech. Yeah, I, I think it's it's clear that there is uh, more awareness uh, in general on this. I would say probably in Europe, uh, that is the case, and I think uh, you you have found the European Union also quite willing to take on big tech. Uh, a number of times, and I think that's that's important. I, I think they are also looking into this in many other countries, including in the U.S., for example, uh, where there is a change and there is a more kind of awareness that this is a this is a problem and needs to be dealt with. So I think there there is basically hope that we'll we'll see government do more, but in the meantime, obviously, people have a, a 
a choice in, in what browser they use and what services they use and trying to find the new services that uh, actually are not kind of where the business model isn't collecting data. I think that's obviously something to be recommended. So John, if we come back to Vivaldi, uh, and as a browser, that, that's quite mature now. It's been there for five years and you have kept added layer, uh, you know, adding layers of features over the years, and you have done this before. There's not you know, something new for you. But uh, in the past five years, uh, have there been um, you know, user behavior or things that have really opened up your mind on how, uh, how people have evolved online or how they've evolved like working um, on smartphones compared to when they used to on PCs? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's kind of funny in some ways because there's been a, such a big change. When I was kind of starting with doing your mobile browsers and people are saying, okay, you don't want to browse the real internet on mobile. And obviously uh, that's changed quite dramatically where mobile is the primary source for a lot of people and there's actually more users on mobile than on desktop. So there, there, there's, there's a change in this way. Uh, now... I think also the screens obviously have gotten bigger and the phones have gotten more powerful. So I think in a way what we try to do is to say, okay, for those people in particular that are spending so much time on their mobile, you want a real mobile browser. So the thinking has always been that you have a mobile browser that is very limited, right? Now, in our case, I mean, we add things like tabs, we add tab stacks, we uh, kind of... We, for the for the tablets, we've added real panels and the like. So we are focusing on building a, also a mobile browser that it's not minimalistic, but actually takes into consideration that for a lot of people, this is their primary source of accessing the internet. And they deserve a browser that allows them to do that in the best possible way. So that, that's been a focus for us. And I think, I mean, the, the situation definitely has changed from that perspective. And, and again, we, we're trying our best to build a really, really good browser for mobile, for tablets, and obviously for desktop. Interesting that you said that this is the primary portal for entry for a lot of people onto the internet. But then in the past couple of years, especially in countries like India, you also have a lot of people who are coming online for the first time. So do you think it's time maybe for the internet itself to evolve, to make itself more accessible uh, to these kind of users? I'm, I'm talking maybe in terms... Of language too, you know, because you know, at least in India, we consider the internet to be a very English thing, and and maybe a lot of the new users or the users out there who are waiting for to come online will have a problem accessing it in English. So, so it'll be great to hear your thoughts on that. Do you think it's time to decentralize the internet? Well, I think I mean it, it's kind of funny when I started to work on the internet in the very beginning, and and we made uh, kind of our browser available in multiple languages, and people were saying, "Hey, the internet is only in English," and and the reality is obviously the world is quite far from that now, and and there's content in in, in a lot of different languages. Now, what we have been trying to do is 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 work on those things with regard to translation. Uh, we're working with a, a company called LingvaNex, and we provide uh, a built-in translation service in the browser. Now, there's uh, multiple ways where this can be used. Um, one is just to translate pages, right? Now, obviously, we know that translation is not as good as the written kind of. We all have to recognize that the translations are not perfect, but they are a lot better than they used to be. And, and I think that's a very, very big change. Um, and what we did on the desktop side now, we put in the ability to select text and, and translate that. And my thinking is that can be very useful for people that are reading a piece of, uh, of text in a language that they are trying to learn and they read it through it. And then they just select a piece of the text to translate it instead of taking the whole thing. And then that allows them to, to work more kind of effectively and learning the language. So I think that those kind of things that we are doing, we have more than 100 languages supported through our translation system. And, and I mean, I, I think people will find it, it's, it's, it's a good service. And again, um, it's another of those services. I mean, it, this is hosted on our service. So there is no, we are not collecting data on our users on what they're, what they're doing there. So that's another case of, 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 of a more privacy-oriented solution. It is using our it is using servers, but at least it's our servers. And, and from that perspective, I mean, 
I, given that we are not in the business of collecting user data, I think it's more private. But but I agree with you. I mean, trying to make things accessible to people in the best possible way. That's that's what we're going for, and and and, and this is this is part of of that. A lot of conversation in India, India, for instance, is around how. Uh, how voice could be that future, you know, how voice and audio could change access for a lot of people. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's true? I think, I mean, uh, the voice is definitely becoming so much better uh, and there's been tremendous work being done on that. So I think that's, yes, that's an interesting approach and uh, uh, kind of adapting to people's need in that way, whether, I mean, that's been always our focus as a company to adapt to the needs of, of the users. And, and, and obviously thinking about how we can use voice is one part of that. Now, we, we still have some work to do there on our side, and, and we'll do more there over time. Um, but I agree with you. I mean, voice is one part of, of how you can adapt to the needs of, of users. So all of us who work on the internet have noticed this, um, you know, this pandemic bump um, over the past uh, you know, almost two years now. Uh, have you also noticed that happening on the browser side of people obviously spending much more time um, online, much more time on your browser? And what have been your learnings from the pandemic? Yeah, I think, I mean, from the perspective, obviously, we do not collect information on our browser users. So we don't really have information on kind of how much they're spending time online. We just don't gather that kind of information we do kind of see the number of users increasing that's the one statistic that we have is kind of how many users we have and kind of that, that level but uh, the, the, I, I think it's very clear that uh, people are obviously spending more time online they're using in particular video conferencing a lot differently and, and I mean we are noticing this very very much in our own company where I mean we've hardly had people gathered at the office for two years. I mean, it's been an absurd situation, but the uh, most of the, the team is in Norway. We have kind of a few people in Iceland. The situation in Iceland has been better than in Norway. But in Norway, I mean, most of the team have just uh, not gone to the office most of the time, given uh, given that it's the kind of work that you can do from home. So that's a big change. And obviously, that means that the services that we are using uh, changes. I mean, we are obviously we were using um, kind of video conferencing and the like. Now we are using video conferencing a lot more than we used to uh, because going and talking to people just over the shoulder is just not an option. So that's changed. And I think, I mean, we've seen that with uh, with significant increase. I think in particular for Zoom and the like, I mean, they've reported uh, massive increases in, 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 the, in their users. Uh, so th- there is a change. And, and I think there's been a big learning curve for schools, uh, which have had to go from in-person education to uh, online education in very many countries. For significant periods of time, so th- th- this has this has been a very big change, uh, and I'm hoping we're done with this soon because <laughs> clearly, I don't think it's good for people not to be meeting up uh, and 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 the like. I think people they need the social. Uh, yes, it, we've made things really good on the internet for, for being able to be social, but there's nothing that beats meeting people in person. I mean, just to be clear about that. So, John, one last thing. If you had one piece of advice for you know internet users out there, um, you know, what would that be? I think, I mean, uh, no, no, that's a that's a good question. Obviously, they all should be using Vivaldi, but that's a kind of I, I don't want to sound like yeah. I mean, focus on. I, I would say privacy is important. I would say that th- this is something in particular in this age that. Think about what's natural, what is acceptable, what do you think companies should be able to do, and would you accept the same thing from other companies? Uh, I mean, I sometimes use the example of, okay, would it be okay for you if your telco listened to your call? Would it be okay if your postman read your mail? Would it be okay if the carpenter that comes and does some work at your house actually kind of writes down what furniture you have and and maybe some take some notes from things that he hears you say while you're there. I mean, it, it's just a, those kind of things happen online. And I think 
people are maybe not realizing to what extent this is happening. And, and, and I think more people should be thinking about how to stay safe, not, not going crazy, because I think in a way, if you can go all the way and you can try to hide everything with Tor and the like, and I think that's probably, I mean, you want to live, you don't want to be chased off the internet. We don't want the internet to be taken over by people collecting information on us. But I think try to be a little bit safe and and, and try to, to kind of make your selection. At the same time, I also, and, and this is important, a lot of good services are ad-based, so try to continue to support those. I think that's really important as well, that you don't just turn off everything everywhere. Um, that I mean, focus more on stopping the, the, the tracking. That would be kind of from my side. Uh, and, and that's what we try to do as a company as well. Thanks a lot, John, for being on the show early in the morning for you. It's my pleasure. And uh, anytime, anytime. Thank you, John. So that was John Von Techner, one of the big daddies of the internet, if we can say so. Um, and this is Nandagopal Rajan saying bye for now. We'll be back again with another guest next week.